In 1933, after a violent encounter with the Nazis, Klaus Fuchs, a brilliant German physicist, escapes to England. When British officials review his file, his anti-Nazi sentiments convince them he is not a risk. He begins work helping the British develop the bomb. But secretly, Klaus Fuchs is a dedicated communist. So, a contingent of British physicists was sent to Los Alamos from England. We didn't vet their security. We assumed the British would vet their security. Each person was allowed to know only what they needed to know to do their job. Yet the most sensitive area at the weapons lab is occupied by physicist and spy Klaus Fuchs. Oppenheimer said later that if Los Alamos had been infinitely compartmentalized, Fuchs would have been in the inner compartment because he worked on the implosion, the squeeze of the core of the Fat Man bomb design, the very center of the effort to make plutonium useful in a nuclear weapon. In August 1945, the atomic bombs that Klaus Fuchs helped develop are dropped on Hiroshima, then on Nagasaki. More than 200,000 people are killed. In the biggest celebration the Windy City has ever seen, joy is unconfined. The war finally ends. But unbeknownst to America, two months earlier, Klaus Fuchs provides his Soviet courier with a detailed sketch of the plutonium bomb, including its components, dimensions, its outer and inner layers, essentially everything the Soviets would need to make one themselves. They had the design for the bomb. They had the design for the uranium enrichment systems. They had the design for the electromagnetic separation systems. For more than 40 years, it was believed that Klaus Fuchs was the only physicist at Los Alamos who was a spy. But in 1995, it was revealed there was another. His name is Theodore Hall, the youngest physicist at Los Alamos. In 1944, Hall gives the Soviets essential information on implosion bomb designs that validates the data from Fuchs. His contacts are American communists Morris and Mona Cohen. Morris and Lona Cohen worked basically as couriers to take information from spies in various places, transmit it back to the Russian embassy in New York. In 1945, Hall gives Lona Cohen blueprints of the bomb exploded over Nagasaki. These she hid in a Kleenex box that she was carrying with her. At the train to go back east, to her horror, she realized that there were army intelligence people checking everybody's luggage. She had the plans on her person. Thinking very quickly, in fact, with amazing cool, she pretended she'd lost her ticket, began crying, pulled out a Kleenex to blow her nose, the agent came over, she handed him the Kleenex box, which of course left him thinking there was nothing involved with that. And after she was through and she found her ticket, he handed her back the box. That's how history is made. With materials provided by Fuchs, Hall, and others, the Soviets are able to explode their own nuclear bomb. When the Soviets tested their first bomb in August 1949, a great surprise on this side. We didn't think they'd have a bomb for another five years at least. There was panic in Washington. There was a sense that the balance had been tipped. 
It was the beginning of the global arms race. Every major country would henceforth be either a member of an exclusive club or a frustrated wannabe. The nuclear arms bazaar was open for business.